All right, let's let's tie this jig today. One thirty second ounce, um, number eight sickle hook, using um, the leftover bucktail, a couple of some hackle feathers, a little bit of UV resin. It's going to be a simple jig. It's going to be a simple tie, but I'm kind of going to explain what guard hairs are on leftover bucktail that you might end up throwing away. But here's some uses for it. I come up with. Uh, I had a request, Richard Miller was wanting to know what I did with my guard hairs that I could not use in my bucktails. Um, don't throw them away, there's actually use for them and it's gonna help you out. Uh, and it's actually gonna make a, a jig you might not have tied and it, hopefully it breaks it down easy enough. And if you got any questions, comments or anything about it, let me know, send me a message. But that's what we got today, 130 second ounce. Let's get it over here in the vise, let's tie it up, let's walk our way through it. All right, so we are back at it. We are got we have got a one thirty second ounce jig head tied on a number eight sickle hook. Uh, I kind of like that combination. It kind of seems like it's a little more in proportion. Um, you ain't got this great big long hook shank. It just it's kind of what I like. It's what I look for when I'm looking um, for the right profile for the jig I'm tying. And this one here kind of does it. We're gonna be tying this jig using. Two pieces of strung rooster saddle hackles. Uh, we're gonna trim them off to where they're just about the length of the hook and about half that again. Uh, we're gonna be tying in some bucktail because Richard Miller had a request of what to do with all that guard hair left over at the end of those bucktails. So we're gonna kind of walk through this and we're gonna talk through it. Richard, I hope this is, is kind of what you were looking for. Uh, we're gonna be using 70 denier ultra thread. We are going to be using Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails for our hook shank. We're going to be using um, UV Light Cure Resin for the body. So we're not going to be using any Chanel on this body. This is going to be a chanel crappie jig or bluegill jig, shell cracker jig. Um, any kind of pan fish you're going after, it don't take much. That might have actually been just a little too much Sally Hansen's on the hook, on the shank of that hook. Uh, if it is, we'll, we'll wipe it off. So we're going to start right there behind the head. We're going to tie all the way to the hook point. Somewhere pretty close to that. Don't have to be exact. Don't get out your tape measure and the calipers. Um, just tie down where you think you got it right to about the point of that hook. Pretty close to it. And then let's work our way back up. And you can see that drip starting to build up off that shank of that hook. So we've, we've got a little too much on here. And we're going to trim it off. Or we're going to wipe it off. I'm going to show you how I get that off there. We're going to take our fingers and I'm just going to pull it off. That's what your pant legs come in good for. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take these two pieces of hackle. We're going to take a black piece and we're going to take a chartreuse piece and I'm going to pinch them together. I'm just going to kind of keep comparing until it looks like I got it to where I want it at. I think we got it. We're going to cut it off right there in front of my fingers. We're gonna lay them both right up around the shank of the hook and we're gonna, we're gonna wrap it just a little bit loose there to begin with just to see if we got it right. And actually, I, I don't really concern myself a whole lot about how the feathers are laying. You know, if a, the green one's on top of the black one or the black one's on top of the green one. Um, but I'm more worried about making sure it's going down on there tight. So I got it to where exactly about where I know I want it at and then I'm gonna start pulling it up tight. And your wrap coming from the bottom up, that's the one you want, that's your tight spot. That's where you want it tight at. So we're gonna put a pretty even layer of black all the way around that till I got all that thread covered, all that hackle covered underneath until I got a solid black body on that shank. You can see that green still coming through right there. I think that's a little bit of the Sally Hansen squeezing out through that thread. All right, so we got it like that. We're gonna build it up just a little bit more. Cause like I said, we're gonna use that as our body. Our thread's gonna be the body on this. We're gonna wrap it. We're gonna try to keep it kind of even. Get a close up so we kind of see what I'm talking about. It's kind of blurry.
I'm just being careful with each trap. I don't want a big wide spot in the middle. I don't want a big wide spot tapered up here at the head. I just want it even all the way around, nice and uniform. Okay, we're gonna stop there. We're gonna come all the way back up here to the head and we're gonna get started again. Um, so when you buy your bucktail, <clears throat> you got this brand new bucktail with all these nice sharp little tips and you've hacked it all up. You've cut it all to pieces. Uh, you've gone to town on it and you get down and all you got left are these crazy little hairs right here sticking up. Very erratic, very coarse. Um, and they are hollow. These are hollow guard hairs at the bottom of the tail. There's not... They won't lay straight when you tie them. So let's, let's cut it off and let me show you what I'm talking about. Those hairs being hollow, once you start wrapping it around that hook, you're going to smash them down and those hairs are almost going to stand up at a 90. Some some will stand directly up at a 90. Some won't be quite so much. But it's, it never has that look in the tail that you're looking for. Um, so we're going to cut that right there off and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. We're going to cut and just let that tail fall. And then we're going to pull out... I'm gonna put just a little bit of a neck around this jig. So we're gonna pull off about, yeah, about that much. We're gonna cut that piece right there off at the end. I'll get them up here between my fingers. And we're gonna put them right here and we're gonna tie that in. And I'm gonna get it wrapped loose. Build up right to your head. Now, when I get back here, I'm going to pull it down really tight. And you should be able to see those hairs starting to stand up. Now, for what I do, I don't like that look in my crappie jig when that's just a tail. So, I will save a lot of my leftover bucktails just for this part. And actually, I'm going to leave that just like that because I think that looks kind of cool. All right, we're going to flip it over. And I'm going to take just a little bit more off the end of that. Going down here to the same spot. I'm going to get these ones that got a little bit more brown in them because that dark hair don't like to die when they make these tails. The darker the hair, the harder it is to die. And I'm going to cut off about just what we cut off on that first little section. Let's see if I can do it. Make it look. All right, we're just going to let it drop. All right, so we're going to pull that out. I'm going to get this long one out of the way. I don't really want that one in there. I'm going to try to keep them all even, and I'm going to pull maybe not quite that much. Go back to about right there. Let's cut that off and see what we got left. Yeah, I probably had it right the first time. Let's cut that off. Kind of hard to see, but that's just about what I want. We're gonna get that on there without sticking that hook in my finger. All right, so we got it to where it's kind of cinched down, and we're gonna get it together. And we're gonna build up the tapered neck along with that bottom side. <clears throat> and we're gonna see if we can get it all covered with that black thread. I think it's going to. And get all that pink covered up so it's not showing through my thread. Oh, it could be sucker bottom up. Okay, now let's pull it kind of tight again. Now see that that guard hair didn't lay quite, didn't quite do it like that first bottom did, and it might. We just might have it in the vise. So let's finish it up and then we'll pull it out of the vise and see what it's doing. But I'm gonna try to get all those little pink spots right there covered in. I'm gonna wrap it all the way up. I think we got it. And we're gonna do a whip finish on it. Hook your thread, wrap it around the loop, pull it up. Two, three, four, and five, Let's pop it out. Let's give it one more whip finish.
get our scissors and cut the rest of that off. And let's see what we, what how it came out. That's what we got. So you got those guard hairs that are kind of standing up, standing out. <clears throat> if that was the only thing you was putting in your jig, your jig tail would be like way out. So <clears throat> I like to do this like that and save those hollow guard hairs for little small jigs. They kind of stand out a little bit. It kind of looks a little neat. I've got a lot of different contrasting colors in it. So we're going to pop that out because I'm happy with it. We're going to put it back in the vise. We're going to take our UV resin. I'm going to leave it zoomed in there so you can see kind of what I do with my resin. I'm going to go completely over the head with it. I'm going to try to keep it out of the eye. And I'm not putting it on super thick, but I'm putting it on definitely heavy enough to where it's going to soak into those threads, soak into that material underneath of it. And it's going to keep that shiny looking finish. The trick with your UV resin is curing it. I hear a lot of people talk about they have a problem with their UV resin curing. You have to make sure that you have a true UV light, not a black light. It's got to be a true UV light. This one I got off of uh, Amazon. And this one has worked pretty good for me. It'll do pretty good at setting it up. It's got different settings on it. And then I get to my black light. You see that drip starting right there on the head? I'm going to try to keep that UV light off of it. But I'm going to let that drip kind of work its way around to where it's even back out. Then I'm going to start hitting with my UV light. And that's going to stiffen that up a little bit. It's going to stop that drip from getting any worse. It's going to set up. It's not going to cure. But it's going to set up enough to where I can hang it in my UV box and let it cure by itself without having to worry about that drip running off the head of it. And right now it's probably getting tacky, but it's gonna take a little longer than that before it totally cures. In my UV box with my three heavy UV lights, this jig's gonna take maybe 30 minutes to cure. Outside in the sunlight, it's gonna take maybe three minutes, but it's cold outside, it's windy outside, I don't wanna go out. That's why I made the UV box and it's just an old metal toolbox that's uh, got three lights mounted inside of it and helps me cure my jigs in big batches instead of small batches. But that is what we, we got. 32nd ounce bluegill jig head. Two small pieces of hackle, and you can use leftover hackle, and I should have done that in this jig. Um, used the leftover hackle and made it a scrap jig, but you, you don't have to use a full tip tail for that. You can reach down inside that feather. You can pull out some of those other fibers and use that, and you don't have to ruin a hotel. But that is what we got for our jig. Uh, Richard Miller, I hope this is what you was kind of after, what you was looking for. But that's it. That's our 132nd ounce bluegill killer. Or a good dock shooting jig. A UV resin will soak down in those threads. You'll be able to pull those little pieces of hackle back. You'll be able to shoot that, jock, that jig under a dock. Um, Got any questions, comments, anything at all, let me know. Uh, I try to answer every question I can. I want to thank each and every one of y'all for subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate that. That is all I got. I'm going to try to go back to getting these out once a week since I got my area set back up. Um, thank you for watching. Don't forget, hit that bell, hit the subscribe, like the video, share the video. All that helps keeps me going and makes me want to do the next video. The more of that I see, the more I want to keep doing them. So, Thank you guys. I appreciate you for watching.